Well, we are going to do something a little different today. This being the first day of the new year, we are going to take part in a covenant renewal service. What is that? Well, John Wesley, uh, the founder of Methodism, introduced the covenant renewal service in 1755. Every year on or near January 1st, the Methodists gathered to renew their covenant with God. It's described as a powerful time of self-examination and confession that culminates in renewal of commitment to discipleship. If you were at any of the Christmas Eve services, or if you watched online, you heard Pastor Mark in his sermon refer to the Gospel of Mark, which does not begin with the Christmas story, but rather with John the Baptist telling us to prepare the way for the Lord's coming, to be baptized and repent of our sins and turn to God to be forgiven. Well, this is fitting with today's covenant renewal service. Of all the resolutions we make, all our hopes and dreams about becoming better people, whatever that means to each of you personally, it begins with this, renewing our covenant with God. Or, if you haven't taken that first step, asking Jesus into your heart, making him your personal Savior and Lord of your life. There's no time like the first day of the new year. And so, let's begin our covenant service. Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant which will never be forgotten. We come together early in this new year to join in a covenant service. Our purpose is to be reminded of our deep need of God's grace. Every person must recognize their sinful condition and remember that they cannot experience forgiveness outside the grace of God. So we embrace this morning an opportunity for a fresh experience of God's grace as we rededicate ourselves to the covenant relationship provided for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. As I mentioned, this service comes to us through John Wesley, the forefather of our theological tradition. For Wesley, what it meant to be a mature disciple of Christ was the joining of believers in a covenant to serve God with all our heart and all our soul. This morning we recognize again not only our great need of the grace of God, but our need to express our community covenant and our personal covenant covenant that in this new year we will love and serve the Lord with all our heart soul mind and strength we're going to continue with some responsive readings which will appear on the screen this is coming to Christ as our priest and by this we now renounce our own righteousness do you deeply sense your need of God's grace in Christ? We acknowledge a deep sense of our need. We see ourselves as sinners in need of a Savior. The Spirit of God has awakened us, for we have cried out, Lord, where are you? Where are you? No hope of escaping out of this wretched state. We are but dead if we continue as we are. What may we do to be saved? Being made aware of our sin and its danger, we look for help and deliverance, but we often look everywhere else before looking to Christ. Nothing will bring us to Christ but absolute necessity. We try to forsake our sins through prayers, 
through sermons, sacraments, searching for salvation. But all of these, though they are needed in their places, cannot save in and of themselves. Our determination cannot help us. In fact, it may reflect the source of our sin. Lord, be merciful to us. What shall we do? We dare not abide as we are, and we are weary of trying to do it alone. Our praying alone will not help us. Our hearing alone will not help us. Woe is us. What shall we do? We must let our sins go. We must let our righteousness go. Christ came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came to seek and to save them that are lost. Friends, will you now trust Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and has provided everything needed for our forgiveness? Lord Jesus, here we are, lost creatures and enemies to God under his wrath and curse. Lord, undertake for us, reconcile us to God, and save our souls. We come, Lord. We believe, Lord. We throw ourselves upon your grace and mercy. We cast ourselves upon your blood. On you we will trust and rest. On you we lay our hope for pardon, for life, and for salvation. We find today's scripture reading in 1 John, in which he talks about living in the light. It reads, This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Let's pray. Lord, you have asked us to feed and give drink to those who hunger, to clothe those who are naked, to welcome the stranger, to visit those who are sick and imprisoned. When we look back on this past year, we might be able to say we did some of those things. We remember the enthusiasm with which we started out, ready to do your work and witness to your love. But you know how things got in our way. 
We allowed ourselves to be swallowed up by worries and fear. We placed comfort of self before service to others. We took the easy way out whenever we could, and you wept for us. Now the new year is here. We cannot change what we did not do, but we can make a covenant with you to be your witnesses in our words, thoughts, and deeds to your people, so that when you say, have you given food and drink to those who hunger and thirst? Have you clothed the naked, welcomed the stranger, visited the sick and imprisoned? We can respond with a joyful yes. Lord, we have done these things with joy and love. Forgive us what we have not done. Inspire us to do what you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus invited us into this covenant relationship with God. Nowhere is that more evident than when Jesus invites us to pray the prayer we have come to call the Lord's Prayer. It is a community prayer. We pray to God recognizing that he has drawn us to himself as a people. It expresses our desire together to see God's kingdom revealed among us. And so, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now yield ourselves to the Lord. As his servants, we must give up dominion and control of ourselves to Christ. For sin shall not be your master, because we are not under the law, but under grace. We are yours, Lord. We reverence you. We dedicate ourselves to your service. In so giving ourselves to the Lord, we affirm we will heartily embrace what he has appointed us to do, both corporately and personally. Let him appoint you to your work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easier and more honorable, others more difficult and menial. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interest. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves as when he requires us to feed and clothe ourselves. Indeed, there are some spiritual duties that are more pleasing than others as to rejoice in the Lord, to be a blessing and praising God. These are the sweet works of a Christian. But then there are other works wherein to please Christ is to deny ourselves. Find what it is that Christ expects of you and then give yourselves totally to his will without bargaining and without reservation. Make us what you will, Lord, and send us where we are to go. Let us be vessels of silver or gold or vessels of wood or stone. As long as we are vessels of honor, we are content. Lord, place us in your kingdom in the roles you have designed for us. Lord, make all of us your servants 
in exalted places or humble places. Let us be full, let us be empty. Let us have all things, let us have nothing. We freely and gladly embrace our places in your kingdom. The commitment to Christ we have just expressed is the essence of discipleship. When we have laid all our hopes upon Christ, casting ourselves wholly upon the merits of his righteousness, when we have, with understanding, given ourselves to him, then we are Christians indeed, and not until then. His people are a willing people. He will be all in all, or he will be nothing. And now let us confirm our commitment by a solemn covenant to him. What would it take for us to make a covenant with God? What would it mean for us to commit ourselves to God's plan for our lives in this new year? First, it would mean the forgiveness of our sins and the constant realization of our continual need of the grace of God in our lives. Second, it would mean a resolve in our own lives to live as disciples of our Lord, foregoing our own selfish motivations and living in our world as servants to others in the name of God. Finally, it would mean not trusting in our own strengths and abilities, but anchoring in the source of our strengths and abilities, God himself. God is here in a very real way. His presence is here to give evidence of his promises to us. Can we trust him? We answer with an unwavering and resounding yes. Let's pray. God, for what you offer, we pray in thanksgiving. Show us the barriers that need to come down to allow you to be in control. Show us the freedom of letting you be fully in control of our lives. God, may we commit all to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as you feel led for our next.